Good afternoon. Welcome to the City of Gary's COVID-19 update for May 15, 2020. Before I begin, I want to acknowledge guests that we have today who will be making presentations shortly thereafter, all relative to COVID and uh, the specifics as it relates to their particular entity. Uh, today we have, as usual, our Gary Health Commissioner, Dr. Roland Walker. We're also joined by Chuck Hughes, Executive Director of the Gary Chamber of Commerce, who will speak from the business perspective side of things. And we have our very own Gary Police Chief, Richard Legan, who will speak about enforcement. My team and I have spent considerable time planning the reopening of city government, houses of worship, and businesses, all in a safe and responsible manner. The most challenging part of this since the beginning has been making sure that we get adequate information out, certainly accurate information, but even more challenging is the fact that there's been no centralized plan coming from our national government. And to that extent, we have all sorts of interpretations as to what to do. Now, I'll admit, I, like many of us, certainly weren't aware of the magnitude that COVID-19 would rise to. Neither did I have a playbook by which to share information and give direction. But to that end, if you recall, on March the 13th, the city ordered two sets of protocol. The first one was in anticipation based on what was happening at the state level. And at that point, we restricted public access to all public facilities, as well as set our people from uh, our particular residents. We restricted their access and made sure that they were safe. At that same time, we also issued Protocol B, which suggested that when things escalated and the data proved that the numbers were rising in Lake County and Gary specifically, that we would go to a more restrictive protocol. And up until this point, we've done that. We've certainly shared a lot of dates with you, some basically speaking about the possibility of reopening and the potential of further interactions. However, in doing so, we've always maintained that our actions would be dictated by the data, not necessarily the dates. So when we give a weekly or a daily update and we put a date out such as uh, last week, we talked about May the 18th, that was largely aspirational. Myself, like everyone else, we certainly are eager to get back to what's going to be our new normal way of business, but we certainly have no control about the continued spread of the virus. And as Dr. Walker will indicate in some of his comments, our numbers at least are to the proportion that it causes us reason for concern. And we feel in this instance, it's in our best interest to err on the side of caution to protect the most. And to that extent, I'm here today to offer what we consider to be the most responsible response to this COVID-19 virus. I want to remind you in doing so that Governor Eric Holcomb has made it explicitly clear that local municipalities have the right and the authority to implement further restrictions based on the data that's happening in that particular area. Trying to balance the needs of a number of groups of residents from shop owners to workers is challenging. But ultimately, as I said earlier, the guide is this, the, the goal rather is the safety of our families, friends, and all of our neighbors. As we reopen, we believe that if we do so too soon, we'll draw visitors from other regions that have more restrictive guidelines, such as Illinois. And to that extent, it's certainly very, very critical that we continue to limit our exposure to COVID-19 and to protect our citizens. Gary continues to see double digit increases in new COVID-19 cases in too many of our daily reports. As I said, 
Previously, I choose to take a more cautious approach to protect our community. The information that we put out today will be posted on Gary.gov, on our City of Gary website. And also, if you know of a family member, a friend, or a neighbor who does not have internet access, please share the information with them. And here we are. We will begin reopening city operations, houses of worship, and Gary businesses beginning the weekend of May 22nd, but with restrictions. The general guidelines are as follows. Whenever possible, we encourage people to continue to work from home. We believe that this will mean less exposure for you and for other people that you're surrounded around, and we believe that you would absolutely be responsible in making sure that you encourage your constituents or colleagues to adhere to those guidelines. First, we have the houses of worship. Initially, we had suggested that they should plan to open this weekend. However, the rate of COVID or new COVID-19 cases continues to rise significantly, as I said. Baptist minister conference, as well as some members of the Church of God and Christ ministers, have already planned to hold off their services, their in-person services rather, until June. We encourage you to do the same and to continue online or drive-through services. For businesses, beginning Sunday, May the 24th, all restaurants, bars with food service, personal service shops such as barbershops, salons, nail salons, etc., retail and wholesale, must clearly, clearly post their customer area's capacity on all exterior doors and registers. Restaurants and bars that offer food service should and can continue phone and online ordering and to provide curbside pickup and delivery. These businesses must also post COVID-19 safety plan directly next to the customer area where they list the capacity posting. These plans must advise customers that the locations of employees are required, or lo employees rather, are required to wear face masks, as well as the persons that are visiting their facilities. And they must also strongly urge social distancing, which includes establishing markings and ensuring that their customers adhere to those. Retail stores may open up to 25% of their capacity. Until then, we continue the online and phone ordering and curbside pickup delivery. Personal service providers may open by appointment only and also adhere to social distancing guidelines and capacity restrictions. Bars, taverns, and nightclubs must remain closed until further notice. As I said earlier, this information will be posted on Gary.gov. At this particular time, I would like to bring up Dr. Walker, who will share our latest statistics and a confirmation of any of the restrictions that have been set forth by this administration. Thank you. Good afternoon, and once again, uh, I'd like to show my appreciation to the citizens of Gary to allow me to come into your home today, to the mayor who's been very supportive of the science of how we go forth trying to deal with this pandemic, and to the entire team that has worked with us to make sure we keep the citizens of Gary safe. Um, also, I want to say thank you to our guests today that will be speaking after me, both um, Chuck Hughes who is uh, our president of our, uh, of our business association here, and to our Chief Liggins, who is our, our police chief today. Um, first, I want to start with some testing updates, as uh, I will give you um, information of the testing sites in, within Incorporated Gary, Indiana. On Monday, the state will partner with, a, uh, with the Gary Health Department, as well as a private entity that the state has contracted, and will begin walk-up testing uh, walk-up testing at Indiana University Northwest that will begin next week and all those who desire a test should be able to go to Indiana University Northwest and receive a test. 
as well as next week, as supplies dictate, we will continue doing testing at the Gary Health Department, and that is supplies um, dictates. We, we had to suspend testing this week as we ran out of testing supplies, and we hope to be able to begin that again next week. And then Methodist Hospital has drive-up testing, and now they now say that it is um, anybody that desires a test can do drive-up testing at Methodist Hospital North Lake. You must call their um, number first, 886-4000, and you must um, call before you drive up, uh, as well as you must call the Gary Health Department and make an appointment before you show up. Now I want to give the Indiana numbers as I have them, the most updated numbers. And in Indiana so far, we have had 26,655 positive cases within the state of Indiana. Unfortunately, we've had 1,550 deaths and um, 16,500 people have been tested to this point so far. In Lake County, there are 2,747 positive cases and unfortunately 136 deaths. Um, and that, let me backtrack. Actually, in the state of Indiana, it was 165,448 people tested. And in Lake County, it's been 15,136 people tested. So that was a correction. In our neighboring county, Porter County, um, there's 381 positive cases. And unfortunately, there's 10 deaths. And they have tested approximately 2,900 people. In the city of Gary now, we have 534 positive cases and 16 deaths. Now, most of this week we've seen two-digit increases. Yesterday we saw 10 new cases. Today we see five new cases, and that has fluctuated up and down. And as I explained yesterday, there was a legislative call yesterday, and I think that reflects the amount of um, mass screening that we've done. And as our numbers went down for the number of tests this week, because of, of running out of test, testing equipment at the health department, we saw those numbers decrease. We anticipate those numbers will increase again in the following week as we will have mass testing as the state has provided us testing in Indiana, Indiana University. A couple of notes we want to make and, and things to look out as parents as you've been watching on TV. We've seen now an increase in symptoms in our pediatric population and as a pediatrician I'm paying particular attention to this. Uh, the first reports we saw we just saw an inflammatory process. You heard of COVID toes, where we saw swelling of toes in our pediatric patients, and we weren't sure what that meant, but there was worry that there may need to be amputation of toes of feet. And now we're seeing that that is a much broader inflammatory process with something that looks like Kawasaki's disease. So uh, now what we're thinking is there were a lot of patients that were being treated for Kawasaki's disease. They were actually having an inflammatory process due to um, the COVID-19 virus, so that's something to look out for. So now I'm encouraging our health systems, health systems across Northwest Indiana to reopen all of their pediatric um, units um, as quickly as possible, as now we're seeing that some of these cases need to be treated on an inpatient basis. I also want to touch base with you about a promising treatment for our COVID, COVID patients, and that is plasma infusion. And that is plasma infusion of antibodies from people who previously tested positive. I myself have gone to two different websites and have signed up to donate plasma. Uh, we are now seeing the first studies as it relates to just COVID, as we know that this is a very successful treatment overall, but in COVID, in a small sample, and we're seeing that that is becoming um, very successful. Also, an update for vaccination, and in the testimony in Congress, uh, as of yesterday, what we learned is is that that vaccination may not be as close as everybody thought. You know, we were told that maybe we were looking at 12 to 18 months uh, for a vaccination, and I accepted that as a number because um, COVID, uh, because coronavirus is not a new virus to us. This is a new mutation. So I was thinking that maybe that was a reasonable time period, but we could be looking at something as long as 18 months to 10 years before we have an effective vaccination. I bring that point up because it is really, really extremely important that we continue to do these social distancing things and these guidelines that, we, that the mayor is setting forth because these are the tools that we have that are effective to battle this virus. And so if we rush in to do things too quickly, I believe that we could see a great uh, uptick in the amount of infections. And as we now know, 
that those, for certain populations, those uh, infections can be deadly. So we want to protect our most vulnerable population, which we know is our senior citizen population. We are now learning that our pediatric population are, are vulnerable and people with underlying health conditions. Today, we have wonderful news to help prevent the spread of the virus. And we have partnered with somebody that I greatly admire, and that's Dr. Willie Wilson, who will be here today in the city of Gary. He has donated 50,000 masks to the city of Gary. We're handing those out to our public. So today at Hudson Campbell in the parking lot, uh, we're having drive-up handout as well as walk-up handout. Please utilize this opportunity to get masks so that you can um, help to not spread, spread this virus by wearing face cover. So today at 2 p.m. at Hudson Campbell, there will be a mask giveaway, and we ask that the public do show up. Um, as the mayor told us, um, we will begin on May 22nd um, um, uh, looking at uh, relieving some of our restrictions as we will be opening businesses on May 24th. As you will notice, our restrictions are, 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 are a little bit more restrictive than what you would have read from um, the state of Indiana, and that is set forth by a governor saying that our local municipalities, based on their conditions, can be more restrictive. And so I, I want to just reiterate how important that is because Lake County, particularly Gary, has um, increasing numbers that is different from the rest of the state. Matter of fact, if you really think about it, and I want to, I want to quote somebody, I don't, I'll, I'll paraphrase um, Martin Brown, is one of our statisticians. And we want to look at Gary as part of Gary, so Lake County, Gary, and even Cass County as part of the Chicagoland catchment area. And that is the second highest amount of infections in the nation behind the New York area, where Indianapolis uh, is, and the rest of Indiana is further down the list. So we really want to be prudent in how we try to battle this virus. We want to follow our social distancing guidelines. We want to follow the the um, guidelines set forth by our mayor, who I think is doing an excellent job in protecting the citizens of Gary. And I will now relinquish the platform to the next speaker, who I believe would be, uh, it would be Chuck Hughes, who will tell us about our businesses today. Thank you very much for your attention. Having been a public safety person for 34 years, I do want to give a shout out to our public safety personnel, our medical personnel, our service providers, all of those people who have been at the forefront to make it possible for us to remain safe. I think we can't commend them enough. Also, I want to take this opportunity as well to express the gratitude that I have and the chamber and hopefully our entire community, inclusive of the business community, of the great job that our mayor is doing. I applaud him for his measured uh, announcements, uh, his temperament that's keeping people calm, and the fact that he's providing information. Uh, the guy has a tough job, uh, Mayor. I'm not just uh, saying that patronizing you because you're here, but uh, you have to make a decision whereby there is at least, according to whatever our census count, would be 170 other opinions in terms of how we should do this. But personally, I'd like to commend you for the fact that you are first ex exemplifying compassion, for the community first, and like everybody else, you do want to see our businesses uh, open up as uh, we do. Uh, the other thing, too, is, and I think this is important for the business community and the community at large, to know that the chamber and our, and our executive board have been in touch with the mayor. The mayor is very, very concerned about the reopening of our businesses and our businesses flourishing. You know, I know, that we've had challenges in business in Gary uh, even prior to COVID-19. This is a startup opportunity for us to now be aware of the fact of how important it is for us to support our local businesses, and we intend to do that. Uh, the Chamber, as we speak, has sent out a survey to all of our members asking them what are their greatest concerns, uh, what what troubles them the most? Where are their apprehensions as it relates to business? We're going to study that data. We're going to share that data. And we're going to try to address those needs to the best of our ability. Uh, the chamber today, in fact, uh, has a business roundtable 
that you'll be able to tune in and listen to. So like the city and like the mayor, we have still been working and we're trying to provide all of the information necessary so that our business owners and our patrons of those businesses will know that when we come back, as Dr. Walker expressed, as the mayor says repeatedly, we have to adhere to what we know or what we hear. We have to adhere to what we hear, <laughs> catchy phrase, because we want to be able to open safely and we want to have some constancy and some continuity to opening. We don't want to open, then have to close again. So there is a responsibility of the business owners, and I think Dr. Walker has very capably pointed that out. But we're not going to put the onus entirely on the business community. As a chamber, we're going to work with the businesses. We're going to encourage citizens to have patience and understanding and kindness and, and, and uh, shall I say, civility uh, as we patronize those businesses and the courtesy, because we know that there's going to be some angst and animosity and some anxiety, shall I say, uh, with, the, with the business owners, with the patrons, with everybody involved. And so we're asking that everybody Show that compassion and show that patience and know that the end run is that we want to see a revitalized, successful business community that's going to come back. The government stimulus program is going to end at some point. So what I'm trying to emphasize to everybody out there is for the Gary, Indiana businesses of which we need to have our tax base on more solid footing and to be able to provide jobs for our local residents, we are going to have to be our own stimulus. We're going to have to support our local businesses. The chamber is going to have programs and initiatives designed to attract people to come out and support those businesses. And the underlying factor, as Dr. Walker and the mayor so aptly indicated, is that safety is going to be the presiding voice in this. Because if you're not here, you can't exist, you can't enjoy this community and the businesses that and the services that they offer anyway. And so uh, from a perspective of the chamber, I just want you to know that we are delighted that we're going to have this wonderful working relationship with the city. The business owners are not going to be out there alone. Uh, but just as the mayor should not be out there alone, as, as patrons and as citizens, we're going to have to make sure that when our services are, are, are needed, when we have certain services and there's an opportunity to support our local businesses, that's what we're going to do. And I want you to know that the chamber is going to be at the forefront of that. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. And our offices are available. Our number is open. We can, you can call if you have any questions because uh, we're going to look upon this as an opportunity to revitalize our businesses. No thanks to COVID-19, but it's a message that I think that we need to share with you. And uh, let's see for a successful business community in Gary. Thank you very much. And uh, I guess I follow uh, one of my public safety heroes. I precede uh, Chief Ligon. Uh, again, nothing but respect for our public safety people. Chief? Thank you, Mayor, Health Commissioner, Chuck Hughes. First of all, I want to, I just owe a great deal of, of love and respect for the mayor and the health commissioner for the concern that they have for our citizens in and around the city of Gary. Most of all, I just, I don't know how to say thank you to, to our police officers that have been enforcing uh, the policies that have set by the mayor. I want to, to really stress this from my heart that we want this to be over too. We really want to end this. The only way we're going to end this is to, to look at the guidance from research and to make it happen. So with this, we're going to continue to enforce the policies that are set by the mayor. I know there may be some confusion between what the governor says and whoever, but we are going by what the mayor's policies are. So we urge you, we're going to continue to enforce the laws. I can personally say that I've received probably 10 thank yous from citizens that have been broken up into groups, uh, have been sent on their way, that the love and the respect that the officers have shown for the citizens of this community has been overwhelming. So I just want to thank all the police officers that continue to do their work every day, not taking anything from the other public safety, everyone, but the police have shown a good deal of love and respect for the citizens of Gary. So I urge you to please 
abide by the policies that are set. We don't want to come and tell you to do something that you know you should not be doing. So we're going to be enforcing the laws until this restriction is lifted. So we urge you to please follow the guidelines and, and let's hope that all of this is over. And I know it's, it's hard because when, when it's personally touch your household or your friends or your relatives, then you know the seriousness of this. So we're urging you that just, just listen to the people that are following this very closely. But how, I'm just telling you, we're going to enforce it because we want this to be over like anyone else. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. So um, I really, really appreciate uh, the gentleman who spoke briefly, uh, Dr. Walker, Chuck Hughes from the Chamber of Commerce, as well as our chief. I've said it from the beginning, and, it, and it's apparent that no one person is going to adequately secure this city and make sure that all of the policies that are implemented or the suggestions are adhered to. It, it takes an entire community, and it certainly takes us recognizing that this is a serious issue. From the law enforcement side or public safety period, I too want to thank those officers, the firefighters, the EMTs, the health department employees, as well as our uh, local health care providers who are all right on the front line. And as the chief expressed, I believe that they've done an exceptional job in dealing in such a uh, unprecedented situation. And to that end, I certainly thank them for their continued efforts. I have just a couple of uh, other reiterations and, and then a, uh, one point that I forgot to mention earlier. And so the reiterations are, uh, that whenever possible, again, we believe that uh, employees should encourage or at least provide an opportunity for their employers or employers should provide opportunities for their employees to work at home whenever possible. This will absolutely mean less exposure to the COVID-19 virus. Residents that are 65 years or older should continue to stay at home. Our senior populations certainly aren't contracting the uh, COVID virus at the highest rate. Uh, in fact, it's sort of gravitated to our younger groups, but we all know that our senior populations because of sometimes pre-existing conditions are the most vulnerable. And so that uh, encouragement remains constant. All residents older than two years old should wear a mask. Certainly masks have been proven and uh, the medical research suggests they help to limit the spread of the virus as well. Uh, we ask that you still continue to avoid large groups. The number that we've set at this particular point are groups larger than 25, but you're reasonable and you're certainly responsible enough to make sure that you practice good social distancing techniques. Playgrounds, basketball courts, sports venues, fitness centers, gyms, and spas, unfortunately at this point, must remain closed. And uh, to the chief's point, our first responders are certainly going to be on hand to ensure that they continue to encourage you to do so. As it relates to city government, we will reopen City of Gary owned facilities and rented facilities to employees only on a limited basis starting May the 25th. Actually, May 26th. The 25th is a holiday. But uh, in the ensuing weeks, we certainly will phase in more or all of our employees. Department heads and managers will contact those employees to give them the official notice as to when they come to work. Finally, in closing, uh, obviously there's a lot to consider here. And when it comes to opening city facilities, there are a lot of prerequisites that need to take place. Our staff is handling that on a daily basis, which includes a deep sanitizing of all city facilities and ensuring that we have adequate PPE to protect not only our personnel, but those who visit our facilities. 
we all are ready to get back to a sense of normalcy. And I say that if we continue to remain patient and as calm as possible, we will. We will certainly get back to our new sense of normalcy and we will do it together. Once again, I wish you all the very best of health and spirits. I thank you for your attention to these directives, and we will see you next week. Thank you.